Hi there, welcome back to the Fireside Chat. I used to do these videos by the fire in the beginning of the pandemic before I built my home studio and the amount of messages I get on social media that says, hey, can you not do more videos from the fire? So I thought it was Christmas time, why not do another one drinking coffee by the fire? This is the third part of a trilogy that I've been doing on my new keynote called Love is a Verb. And today I wanna to talk about love languages. And so the idea of love as a verb is that love is, is a thing that you have to action. So it's a thing that you do. It's not just a state of being or a, some kind of philosophical concept or just an emotion. It really is something that you have to share, you have to show with your partners, with your friends, with your family. Otherwise, how do we know that we feel loved? And the same thing is true of the customer experience. So for your consumer, if we want customer lifetime value and brand loyalty and all those things that we do want, we have to be able to show our customers that we love them, that we appreciate them, and we have to show them that. And so there are five love languages and they're there on the screen for you now. The five long love languages are how we actually activate love in a personal relationship. And I think it's good if we look at our personal relationships, look at those five things, and then take each one and see what we can do in our customer journey to bring that to life. Uh, for customer experience. So let's try the first one there, words of affirmation. So those three words, I love you, we all often remember the first time maybe someone said that to us in a partnership. Uh, I love you is it's such an easy thing to say, but often we don't say it enough. We say it in the early beginning of a relationship. So when you acquire a customer, you might tell them that you really appreciate their business, but then we forget to actually tell them on, uh, on an ongoing basis. So in, in a personal relationship that I love you thing, it can be a text, it can be an Instagram message, it can be a little note in the fridge, it can be a little heart drawn on the mirror after you have your shower. You know, it can be anything that tells your partner that, look, I love you still. And we don't do enough of that in an everyday customer journey. We don't show our customers that we care. Look at this handwritten note from a mechanic in Ohio called Jimmy's, who into every car after their service, when you get into your car and drive it away as a customer, there is a handwritten note from Jimmy saying, thank you for your business. I think it's really important that in our everyday, and particularly in our digital realities today, oh my God, I'm gonna get spat at by this fire. Uh, I should really put a fire card on. Um, you know, the idea of connecting with our customers, and we can do it so easily digitally every day that we need to be better at words of affirmation, words of appreciation to our customers to thank them for our business. So that's number one, words of affirmation. Number two is quality time, time together. So this old adage, how do you spell love? It's a very simple four letter word, T-I-M-E spending time with those that we love, whether they're your parents, your siblings, your children, or your lover, your partner, showing them we care for them is, uh, and spending time with them and giving them time from our, our day is precious. Because time is precious, it's a very, very uh, you know, small commodity in our everyday lives that we get to share. And if you are in a relationship where you feel that the person isn't giving you time, you really start to feel that your self-worth drops. And it's the same thing in business, it really is. Unless we give the customers time, think about the last time you were maybe calling a utility company or an insurance company or a bank and you were left on hold for 20 minutes. How you feel, it's awful. And we, we pay money to save time. We pay money for priority boarding on planes. We pay money for fast pass in Disneyland, so not to queue. And so we always try and find ways of, of, of not spending time in a customer journey where we don't want to. Let me give you a really simple example. I was flying home from Zurich recently on Swiss Air. I was about to board the plane. They were looking for some hold luggage. The, the plane was full. They wanted about 20 or, or 15 cabin bags from passengers to put in the holds. Now, I don't want to give up my cabin bag. I fly full time. I don't want to spend 20 minutes at the other end waiting for my bag on the carousel. So I want to keep this bag with me because I fly only with hand luggage, which is always overweight. <laughs> so they have an eight kg limit, but mine was 12 kg. I knew it was at a good bit of higher. He could see it was higher. I knew it was higher. And as I approached the gate and he asked my boarding card, he's about to say, give me your bag. I hand him a business class boarding card and my loyalty card. And he sees I'm a premium flyer, I'm a business class passenger. And without a missing a beat, he just waves me through. He knows he's gonna take a bag from someone else, some poor amateur flyer later on. So in that moment, he saves me time. I appreciate that. I now love Swiss Air. So it's that simple thing of make sure you appreciate your customer, make sure you give them time and make sure you look for any conflict in the customer journey where it takes time away from the customer, make sure you fix that. It's really, really important. Number three in our uh, five love languages is gift giving. And gift giving is really 
obvious I think we all know that we show love by giving people gifts the problem is we often give our husband or our wife or our partners gifts on their birthday and at Christmas and the problem with that is it's expected so the power of a gift isn't is kind of diluted when it's expected the real beauty of gift giving is when you do it as a surprise and delight moment and it means something to a customer take this for example Christina was in a conference she went to the same hotel every single year uh, in, in Nashville and Gaylord and she loved the sharper alarm clock that used to wake her up in the room. It had lovely spa sounds. She was back to this conference for the third time, staying in the hotel for the third time, and she tweeted the hotel saying, do you know where I can buy one of these clocks? Every time I come here, I love waking up with this clock, the spa sounds. And they said, yeah, here's the link, but it wasn't the right one. She'd already tried that. And so, look, she went back to the conference. That was it. But when she came back to her room, in her room, she was met with this little note from the management saying, we're glad you like the clock. Here, have one on us to take home. That little moment of connection is so beautiful. And here in Ireland, actually, I use a retailer called Supervalue. And recently, they rewarded their frequent online grocery shoppers with a surprise hamper for Christmas with all their goodies in it. And that's a wonderful moment where your online grocery uh, delivery arrives as usual. And in it, there's a, sec a secret second box. And it's a little gift from the retailer. Lovely little moments of surprise and delight. So look for those moments along the customer journey where you can surprise and delight your customer with a little gift. The fourth love language is physical touch. And it's one of the ones that actually is used least sometimes in, in relationships, in everyday personal relationships. And we understand physical touch in terms of hand-holding, massage, sex, hugs, all that kind of stuff. But also, even a physical proximity, being cuddled up on the couch next to someone or as you pass behind them to get to the kettle in the, in the kitchen and maybe you lay your hand on their shoulder or the small of their back. And it's just these little moments of, of love and tenderness. And physical touch is lovely. Now, how, how do we bring that to life in a customer journey? We don't get to go hugging all our customers or having sex with them all much as we'd like to sometimes. Um, how we do it is, of course, we, we physically bring the brand to life in their lives. And so I could be a really simple example. During the pandemic, I wasn't traveling so much. I wasn't, being, I wasn't able to get to the supermarkets. And so I subscribed to a company called Drop Chef. It's a meal subscription company that delivers groceries to your door every week for meals. And I canceled it towards the end of the pandemic because the supermarkets were open again. I was able to move around. But just before I canceled it, they had given me a little, again, a gift giving, a little surprise uh, wooden spatula with their brand on it in the box one week. Very simple. So into my drawer it went. I was cooking about three or four weeks ago and I used that spoon and because their brand is on it I thought of them and then I thought wow well, actually I'm touring again quite busily on tour and the tour is getting frequent and I'm away from home more and therefore I need to get into supermarkets is a bit more difficult maybe I should get that product back now I don't know what I've had that thought if I hadn't taken that spoon out with their brand and they, they had personalized that brand that spoon with their brand and that therefore it physicalized their brand for me in my house so that's important bringing your brand to life but not with a USB stick or promotional pen you know make it something useful I mean I'm a b2b brand my own speaking business is a b2b brand so I'm hired by corporates all over the world and industry associations I'm one product in a whole array that they buy to put on an event from the venue to the catering and, and so I need to stay present in their lives so I will send them things like this on the screen little can use socks can use chocolate can use quirky cards all year just to stay alive Alive and stay top of mind in their purchasing process to live alive on their desk for a day and that's what it's about it's about physicalizing your brand so think about some way you can physicalize your brand and business into your everyday customers lives to keep that connection it's really important and the last one that I want to talk about is acts of service this is the fifth love language acts of service the little things you do for those you care about in your life to show them that you care and that can be as simple as bringing their morning coffee to them in the morning it can be making them their favorite meal when you know they've had a hot hot day or running a bath before they get home or being taxi dad if you're a father to your children and it's all the little things that you do to show the people in your life that you care about them and again in business we have an opportunity to do this we have an opportunity to bring this to life every single day and because the peer-to-peer -peer network is so strong if you do something for a customer they tend to tell others who tell others and that's really how the brand is brought to life today so think about these three examples on the screen here on the on the the left is a waitress who buys lunch for the firefighters who have been fighting a blaze all day in their local community they come into her restaurant for, for lunch or dinner and she picks up the check and she writes them a little note saying thank you for, for your help. And that gets shared on social media. The second one there where there's an employee from Wendy's leaves his station to help this old man to his car. Now this old man wasn't even eating in Wendy's, but he you know he takes the time to help an old elderly man to his car in the rain. Or the last one, my favourite, is a still from a video taken in Target. Uh, a young man comes in to buy a clip-on tie because he's got a job interview the next day. They don't sell clip-on ties. So a, a, an employee takes the time to show him how to tie a tie, even ties it for him, and while doing that, gives him some advice and some questions that might 
come up on the job interview tomorrow. And it's all recorded by another, another customer. It's a lovely tender moment of, of an employee taking time to kind of have a little active service towards a customer. So think about the things you can do for your customers that really help you connect. And those things are how we deepen relationships. And if you can try and look at those five values again on the screen there in front of you, those five love languages, if you can bring those to life, not at every single point, but pick a certain point in the customer journey where they make sense and where it will deepen the connection between your brand, your business and the customer. And that's how we build emotive connections, how we build relationships. And that ultimately is what you want with a customer. You want a long-term customer relationship and not a one-night stand. Listen, thank you for joining me by the fire. Uh, have a very happy Christmas. I'm going to finish my coffee here. And after all, it is Ireland. So, you know, let's all enjoy a nice Irish coffee for Christmas. Have a very happy Christmas. And bring those love languages to life in your own personal relationships too. It's not just for business, you know. Oh, 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 oh,